Hello, I'm Philip Burton of sqlserver101.com. In this video, which is taken from my new DP900 course, we will be creating an Azure account and then installing Azure SQL database with sample data on the cloud. So for more information about my DP900 course, please have a look at the description at the bottom of this video. And now, please enjoy. So now let's get our free account. And you can see an ad at the top, azure.microsoft.com account free. Though you could just Google it, Azure free credit and see what you get as well. So let's click on that. And you can see we have a start for free, quite enticing button at the top. So what is it you get? You get 12 months of certain services, $200 to be used in the first 30 days and 25 or more services, which are always free. And you can see what services are free. For instance, a virtual machine can be free for 750 hours. So what's that? That's about a month. So free each month for 12 months. However, bear in mind that that's not necessarily the same as storage. So you'll find that there is I think storage down here, but very minimal if there is. But you also notice SQL databases free for 250 gigabytes. Now there's a storage, five gigabytes of file storage and five gigabytes of something that's called blob storage. So we'll have a look at what those are as part of this course. So it's worth getting. Now I should point out that if you go over any limits, you will have to pay. And unfortunately I can't be held responsible for any expenses that you have, but I will be showing how to pause certain resources. So when you pause it, it doesn't necessarily cost you any money. So I'm going to click start for free and you can see we're now at the sign up page. So first of all, I need to enter some details. So there's a bit of waiting and you'll find this to be uh, quite often a thing that happens, unfortunately, with Microsoft Azure. There will be a fair bit of waiting. Now, you don't actually have to do for this certification anything practical in Microsoft Azure. You just need to learn about it. However, I do find that it's actually quite good to actually do and then you've got a better visual memory of what each of these particular services are. So you can see it's inviting me to take an identity verification by card. So yes, and there's agreement. Yes, I do want to agree to the subscription agreement, offer details, privacy statement, worth reading. I don't want Microsoft to share my information with select partners though. Though it is interesting to get information about Azure. So I'll sign up. So confirming your information. So I'm just going to say not sure for my intended use and click submit. There are feedback sent. So we're now setting up the account. And as I say, it does take a bit of a while to do some things like setting up virtual machines, setting up Cosmos DB databases and so forth. But eventually you will get into the Microsoft Azure account. And this is the quick start center. So you could have a look at each of these if you want to find out how to create a web account, deploy a virtual machines, set up a database and so forth. However, I'm going to actually ignore all of this. And indeed, there is another section, take an online course. So this is good, but it's probably not focused for what we're doing in DP-900. I'll show you near the end of this course, something by Microsoft, which is a lot more focused. Instead, I'm going to click on this home button and this is where I will generally start each of these practical videos. So as I say, you don't actually have to do any of these practical things to get the certification, but it probably helps if you know what's happening. And I'm also generally going to expand this menu as well. So you can see we can quickly get access to things like SQL databases, Azure Cosmos databases and other things. So let's just take a quick look around Microsoft Azure. So as I say, this is a quick way of getting to common places like, for instance, cost management and billing. So if you're worried how much things are going to cost, well, don't worry, you've got information there. You can click on all services. So you're not just restricted to the little bits that you see. So if I wanted to go to storage or databases, 
they're all clickable there. Alternatively, I could just click at the top and search for a particular resource. So maybe I'm looking for an Azure SQL database and you can see it's now suggesting SQL databases as a suggestion. Over here, we have got a command line interface. We'll use that later, but very briefly, the shell is not much used in the certification, but you will be quite to know things about it. Over here, we have got your directory and subscription. So just information about what you want. Currently, we're on the free trial. Then we've got notifications. So what is currently happening? So anything that happens, if you set up anything, you'll get a notification that it's being set up and then it has been set up. We have got various settings. So where do you want to be is probably the biggest setting. So do you want to start at home, which I generally do, or do you want to start on your own created dashboard? So these are little elements that you pin to a dashboard. What theme do you want? That could be quite useful if, for instance, you need a dark theme or a high contrast theme. Question mark, this gives you various helps and then let us know how you are getting on. And then right at the end, we have your sign out button. So this is a quick look around Azure. And in the next video, we're going to start using Azure. We're going to install a new database with some sample data. In this video, we're going to create our very first service. And this being the DP900 course, we're going to create an Azure SQL database. So I'm at the home tab, which I've uh, blown up quite a bit. So everybody can see it if you're using a mobile device, for instance. And I'm going to go to SQL databases. Now I could just click at the top in the search engine here and type in SQL databases, or I could click on this left hand side and click on SQL databases. So however you do, let's go to SQL databases and you can see we've got create SQL database, we've got add, when we went at the beginning here, if I hover over it, you can see that there is a create button there as well. Lots of training. Now I'm not at this stage actually going to get involved with what an actual SQL database is. We're just going to create it and then use it and go from there. So I'm going to click on add button here. So we're in home SQL databases. So you can see the chain that we've got at the top. It's called breadcrumbs. So it shows where you are. I've gone from home to SQL databases and I can go back. They're all hyperlinked. So if I click on them, they'll take me back a stage. So I'm going to add a new SQL database. First of all, we have to select your subscription. Well, we only have the one subscription, the free trial in this particular case. And we also need a resource group. So resource group is where all of the resources are going to go. In this case, the SQL database and maybe some networking and storage as well. Now I don't have any resource group already set up, so I'm going to create a new one. So a good thing about resource groups as well is you could get rid of the entire resource group and that gets rid of all of the resources. So even though we're going to be creating lots of different things in connection with an SQL database, if they're in a resource group and I get rid of the resource group, I get rid of the SQL database and everything that it relies on. So I'm going to call this SQL database as my resource group. Click OK. So you can see now new SQL database. Now the database requires a name. So can I call the database A? And you can see that actually could work. The database must not match special patterns, so you can't probably call it database. It's got to be up to 128 characters. It can't return, contain reserved words and no database with the same name exists on the server. So we need a server. So we're going to create that first. So click on create new server. So here we have our server name. Now the server name needs to be unique among the entirety of all SQL servers. So I can't just call it, for instance, server. Somebody will already have got that. So I'm going to call this test SQL database. See if that's taken. DP 900. That won't be taken, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. So you can see that the server name test SQL database 
dp900.database.windows.net. That's what I can use to interact with it later. So I need a admin login. So I'm going to have my login as dp900. So you can see, can't use things like admin, administrator, SA, which is systems admin and so forth. So I'm going to need a password and you can see it must be minimum of eight characters. Got to have three levels of the complexity. So uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and non-alphameric symbols. So there we go. That should be okay, except I've used DP 900. So let's just try this again. Hopefully that should be okay. Confirm the password and then a region. So Azure is all over the planet. So I'm going to go for my local region, which is UK South. There's also a UK West as well, if I remember, but I'll go for the South and click OK. So I'm going to note down these details because I'll probably need it in the future. So there's my server. So now I can create a database and because it's got to be unique in the server, it could be anything. So I'm going to call it DP 900. We'll have a look at elastic pools later. We will just say yes to the standard compute and storage. Now there's various tabs at the top. And if I click on next, I'll take me to the next tab networking. I'm not going to do anything with it at the moment. So choosing no access gives you defaults, but I'm going to change them later. Additional settings. I want to use some sample data. So AdventureWorks LT, the light version is going to be installed and click next tags. I'll just ignore and then review and create. So you can see the estimated cost about 14 pounds. That's about 18, 19 dollars. And you can see everything that I have selected and click create. So now we can see deployment is in progress. So it is now actually creating it. It's going to possibly take a few minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video until it's done. And while it's doing, you'll notice there's a little line underneath the notifications and I can always click on the notifications to find out what's happening. Right, so after a couple of minutes, you can see deployment succeeded. I can now go to the resource. I can also pin it to the dashboard. So I can create a dashboard which has got little elements from say a database or other things. So I'll cl go, click on go to resource. Here's my resource. I'm now going to use the query editor on the left hand side to write a query. So you can see on the left hand side, we've got various different options and tasks we can do. So I'm going to click on the query editor. So I need to log in with my password, which I have previously created. You can also use Active Directory Authentication. And you can see there is a problem with a firewall. We'll have a look at firewall problems as part of this course. So I'm going to go into the firewall settings and I'm going to add my own internet protocol address. In other words, me. So this is me. I've clicked it twice accidentally. So let's delete and then I'll save. Updating firewall rules successfully are done. So now I can go back to the home. I can go to my resource, go back to query editor, log in, and we can see various tables, views, and stored procedures here. And I am going to go select star from sales LT dot address run the query and there is the data. Now it's not just in Microsoft Azure online that I can use this. I can also go to an external program such as SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS. So I can type in my server name that I copied earlier, my login and password details. Go to this particular database DP 900 and say select star from a table 
and you can see now I have downloaded information that's on the cloud onto my own computer without actually using a browser, but using a different client. And I could do exactly the same thing in Excel, Visual Studio, and other applications. So in this video, what we have done, we've gone to Microsoft Azure, we have created an SQL database, also known as an Azure SQL database. We've given it sample data. We have allowed our own IP address as part of the firewall. We've given it username, password, and we have run a select statement. So there's a lot of things here in this, this one video that we've got to look at at various levels. For some of you, you'll know what a database is. You'll know that it contains tables, views, and stored procedures. You know how to create a select statement. For others, this might be the first time that you've actually got some potential hands-on experience with creating a database. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. Now we've reached this stage. So we've done a lot of running. We've created this in pretty fast time. Now let's take this much more slowly and we'll start with the select statement. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. In my DP900 course, I'll be going into much greater depth. I will be describing query techniques for data using SQL language. I'll be looking at relational data workloads, SQL Server, and other Azure relational databases before going on to semi-structured data, for instance, the Cosmos DB APIs, non-relational data offerings, and much, much more. And at the end of the course, with a little bit of practice, and maybe going to the official measureup.com practice exam, you could go for the official Microsoft DP900 certification. Wouldn't that look good on your CV or resume? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not like it? And then why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be informed of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you in the next video.